everybody. Oh, <laughs> at first it said no connection, but here we are. Take five at five. Oh, four again. At least we are consistent. <laughs> Consistently late. <laughs> um, happy New Year. Almost. Almost. Three days. A couple away. days. Oh, hey guys. Uh, hold on. I don't know what this means. There's notes. Oh, hi Dana. Uh, hey Mike and Yolanda. Good to see you guys. Um, so yeah, give us a thumbs up. Hi Tim. As you're joining us, give us some hearts or something. Uh, yeah, yeah, we we weren't feeling good. I don't know about you, but we hit yeah. um, we hit the uh, that whole flu thing, which. Hi Jess and Heather. Stunk. Yeah, we did. But we had like respiratory flu for a few days and it was all like, ugh. And I then I got stomach flu yeah. right as soon as he got better. I got was, the flu. It was a good. I got a flu shot this year. Hey, and Heidi. And I think it did help a little bit, but, yeah. you know, I don't know. Just I did not get a flu shot and obviously I got the flu, but I never get a flu shot. So, hey, Tommy. Right. But um. So yeah, sorry you guys, we missed last week all together for Friday and then Monday being New Year or mm -hmm. Christmas Eve. Yeah, so. there was a lot going on. We had service and I'm sure you did too, Christmas Eve service and yeah, it was great. meeting with family and um, hey, doing Laura, the whole, Rachel, Lisa. The whole uh, uh, Christmas thing, yeah. which is good. So <laughs> you're probably uh, worn out too. But, but yes. it's good. Hopefully you're getting a chance to relax with your family and yeah. all that stuff. It but. is good. Excited for the for the new year too. We, we mm -hmm. actually, we're going to get away for a day or two and then just, mm -hmm. um, we're going to pray and ask God for 2019. Direction yeah. and vision for the next year. We, we do that at the end of every year and mm -hmm. um, God is always faithful to give us some really good encouraging stuff uh, that takes us through the, the next year and last night in a dream I actually was just waking up from a dream and I heard God's voice speak a word to me so um, next week hopefully we'll give you a, a little bit of taste of what God was speaking to us through our vision retreat but um, yeah so I'll, I'll let you know what that word was next week when we <laughs> come back together with you guys but so since I was sick last Sunday, I didn't make it to church at all. And Dan preached an awesome message uh, about your destiny in disguise. And so he's going to kind of recap that message. And I'll just add a little mm. spice here and there. How about that? Because <laughs> exactly I, I was not does. there. <laughs> right. Church was dead. She's not there. It's like, oh, oh great. What's going on? Emily's not no. here. They leave <laughs> halfway through the message. But anyway. Hey, um, Shiloh. Hey, Linda. You know, um, I want to say this is that it just seems like, um, you know, God never shows up and looks like we expect. I'll just say that God rarely or never shows up and looks like we expect. He always shows up. Okay? He always shows up, but he never just shows up. doesn't look right. like we think. <laughs> exactly. That, right. that, that, that's what I'm trying to say. Yes. Um, but he shows up. He shows up through people and circumstances. Mm -hmm. And so really... Uh, we talked about how it's it can be easy to miss uh, God. Yeah. Um, and I, my prayer is that we just become aware of Him in every single circumstance, um, especially if we're meeting with family or uh, you know that 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 we are aware of God that He is in um, those circumstances and He speaks through people. And I thought yeah. it's really easy to judge a book by the cover. You know, we get into people's mm -hmm. lives and we think, well, what do they have to offer me or what can they give me? But God, God brings these unlikely people into our lives. Mm -hmm. um, like he says, I take the simple things and confound the wise. Um, it's like he takes the peculiar and he mm -hmm. brings them in almost like a test mm -hmm. to see how, to see if we see him. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I don't know if you feel the same way, but it's so, it's so, it can be so easy to miss him. But I thought um, Meg Grinnell, our, our worship pastor, she... Mm -hmm said something really profound in, um, in our staff meeting as, as I was, we were talking about how uh, Jesus uh, one day, he was like probably 12 or 13, he got lost um, or his family forgot him at a yeah. festival. They went back home, a day's journey. They found out he was gone, traveled back another day's journey. And then they found him in church. And they said, we, where have you been? We've, we've been worried about you. 
dad's not happy. You're going to be grounded. Yeah. <laughs> and just my own, my own words. But he said, they said, we're, they said uh, and then Jesus said, um, didn't you know this is where I would be? Like, and so anyways, the, the question was like, what does this, how do, what does this speak to you? And the first thing Meg says was, it, it tells me that Jesus is easy to find. I thought, that is so true. Jesus is easy to find. He said, you, you know where I'm at. Like, mm. this is where I am. That's good. I'm teaching. I'm preaching. I'm praying. I'm healing the sick. Like, you know where to find me. Mm. And I thought, that is so true. Like, we can complicate things so much. We can make it all about mm. us. We can make it all about other things mm. um, other than really the simple things about finding Jesus. So right. we talked about, about his father's business. Yes. Yeah. Um, destiny in disguise is really about not missing him. Mm -hmm. And, and so God definitely has a destiny for each and every one of us. It's found in this verse, um, Ephesians two ten, which is for, we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Mm. He's just saying, Hey, I've got this plan this path mapped out for you. And it's it's really our up to us, the choices that we make, to whether we're gonna fulfill it or whether we we won't. And so Yeah, that's it, true. And God has so much for us. Like each day I believe has ha, or have th has things and people to meet mm -hmm. in order to fulfill everything God's called us to fulfill. Mm -hmm. So we just said, uh, don't miss it. Don't be aware of God in every single circumstance when you're around someone like take a moment to back up and just say god are what are you doing in this moment um and so this mm -hmm. this destiny is fulfilled we said it comes from god and it comes through people mm -hmm. um that's why we said never judge a book by the cover right um honor everybody because if you don't honor a person you you'll miss what God has to bring through that person. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why when you honor your parents, you know, uh, you, God, God speaks through parents. When you honor, honor leadership, honor, <laughs> honor the, 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 wherever church you're at or, or your mm -hmm. job, honor your boss, honor your authority, honor the president. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you honor them in that way, you are now opening yourself up to what God has for you. When you dishonor them, you close yourself off to that. Mm -hmm. that that's, just a, that's just a biblical principle. What, 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 what I'm really saying, when you honor people, all people, right. then you can experience God through them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I read this book. Um, it's a really good book with a couple of the young women, younger women that I mentor. Um, it's called Culture of Honor by Danny Silk. And um, I really love the principles in that book because um, it talks about like everybody has a different perspective in the body of Christ and everybody has a different gift, different personality, different um, uh, purpose to fulfill. I guess every single person on this earth has a billion different purposes with a completely unique, you know, plan and purpose for mm -hmm. their life. And so... Um, every one of those needs to be honored because they are made in the image of God. And even though other people's gifts or callings or purpose might be so completely different than yours or mine, uh, if we honor them, that's working together as a body of Christ. Like we, we, none of us can do the entire purpose of God and uh, advance God's kingdom by ourselves. No, we, we really, like birds of a feather flock together. We really yeah, want... Yeah, we tend to... We, we, want it, we want people to be like us because yeah. it's easier. Well, if they're Cling all like to us and like they, us. They, they operate in that way, but really it's the, it's the opposite in the kingdom. Everyone's different. Yeah. And it's really a huge test to see if we will can receive mm -hmm. from all different types of people. Yes. Um, it's, it's just a big, I think a big test of our, um, of really being aware of God. Right. Yeah. Hey there, you guys, uh, Tracy and, um, Kathy and Grace, John, uh, Sally, <laughs> all of you mm -hmm. that are just joining us. Um, so thanks for joining us. So today. the easiest way to fulfill your destiny, the easiest way to, to make sure that you walk out all, everything God has for you is just simply do good. It's yeah. just a simple phrase and do good. We mm -hmm. said it is really Good works fulfill God's good destiny for you. Mm -hmm. Bad works don't. Bad mm -hmm. works get us stuck. Bad works injure people, but good works do. So when you think of like walking God's destiny, it's just making good choices, really doing good. Like, that, what are some examples of that? I mean, I mean, I mean, we we probably know in our conscience, conscience, and just 
human nature or something. Just inside, we yeah. know what's good and bad, right? We know right and wrong. We but do. What I, are some examples? Well, of I mean, I think that one of the biggest things is just forgiving people. Um, mm. Like that—that that is the central theme of the cross. The cross is all about forgiveness. Us kind. being forgiven by God. Yes, mm-hmm. being kind. Like mm-hmm. just just doing good works. Um, you know, uh, whatever you can do, encourage someone. Mm-hmm. Um, get you know, uh, do something good for someone. Yeah. Um, you know, like I would say, whenever when you wake up in the morning, you say, Lord. Give me every opportunity to do good today. Mm -hmm. And when you do, you're catapulting yourself into your destiny. Now, when you don't, not much happens. So we we just said, really, are you altering the future? Yes and no. Mm -hmm. You're you're doing good. Um, What it does is it it alters the future the way God intended it to be. So in other words, when you don't do good, you're not doing much for for your future that God has planned. But when you do good, you're Mm -hmm. really... You're, you're kind of bringing God's destiny into your destiny. Does that make sense? Just yes. simply. So I see it as like you're taking a step, um, doing something good or doing good works is taking a step down the path that God has for you that is preparing the next step for you. It's like preparing the way for you to do more good works. But when you do something, when you choose, instead of doing the good work that's in front of you, like forgiving somebody or just being kind to them or whatever that day, um, then you're actually putting a block in front of in front of your path. Yeah, you're and you're not that's not preparing the way for you to do more of God's yeah good works. People will get stuck and call that perpetual past where you just like you're not doing anything. Yeah. Um that doing the good work that God wants you to do. So mm. we said that God works um, his destiny through people, uh, which is I, I, I said it's miracles are not packaged in perfection. In other words, you'll meet people and you're like how is God's destiny being fulfilled to this person? Mm-hmm. Um, they're not like me. Mm-hmm. Um, they might even you might even be challenged by them in, in a certain Completely way. Completely opposite from Completely me. Completely opposite. Which usually you're married to them. Yeah, we are. We, we are I, <laughs> if you're opposite, you're I probably was, married to them. <laughs> I was telling Levi this morning. I said, you know, I said, I said, real, you know, when I met Emily, you know, she's different. She's. Uh, very goal goal oriented. Strange. No, just <laughs> just the fact that you, you know, you have certain ways. Like like I would have yeah. called it obsessive compulsive disorder when I met her because I am a little OCD. Okay? Well, because because I like I, it's not OCD. What what it is? I, I like to throw my stuff on the floor and then pick it up <laughs> like three days later. You know, we, we like okay. to call that messy. Yeah, that's messy. So I would throw it on the floor. But when we first met, I noticed that she would throw it in the hamper and so this is just a simple thing so then yeah. I would she would you know hey can you do can you do that I, I just learned from example <laughs> but it was frustrating at first because I, I thought I thought <clears throat> why is this bothering me so much mm-hmm. I could have said she's bothering me but really God brought this gift into my life <laughs> to help me in a way that I couldn't really help myself she brought in um, processes and she brought in these things to help me go forward, move forward in those areas. Now I, I bring right. something to the table too yes. that's different from her, yes. but it, what it does is it, it, it we complement each other if we embrace God's gift through each other. Does that make sense? Right. So, so it, yes. So you, you weren't like me. You're were, you're were opposite of me in many ways. Yeah, but there are good things that we can learn from each other in those. Yes, you know. From being opposites. Well, so it, same thing in the body of Christ, you guys. You might be having to work with somebody who uh, gets on your nerves because they're completely opposite from you and their gifts are completely different from yours and maybe you want to get irritated with them and you wish that they were more like you in some ways. But instead, uh, if you can celebrate those differences and honor them like we were just talking about and then notice what God is doing in you when you feel like it's sandpaper, you know, well, like it, it's true. rubbing you the wrong way. It's true, you know, like, yeah, because we... It's helping you somehow. Right, we think, I was just thinking about this, we, we think that um, someone's not loving if they are challenging us. Mm. And the truth is that the definition of love, it, it, it's not, it's not, uh, love isn't a hug, by the way, that's not the definition that God gives us. Love mm. isn't um, a feeling. Mm-hmm. Love is patient. In other words, mm-hmm. love suffers long. So the very first definition of love is, I'm going to suffer long. I'm going to suffer long with someone who maybe even doesn't treat you well. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to keep suffering long. I'm going to suffer mm-hmm. long. I mean, that, that is the very first word that describes love. But we, the world describes it as a feeling. So, mm-hmm. so I guess what we're saying is, 
is, you know, when, whenever you're around people, honor all of them, be, honor every single one of them because they have a gift to bring. Right. God works through all people. Yeah. And if you're, we're, if we only, uh, if we kind of put people in a box, we're going to miss the gift that they have to right. give. Right. Mm -hmm. True. Yes. Mm -hmm. So God works through people. And, um, and then we also said God works through circumstances. Um, and this is something that, that we have to also embrace is when we, when we, we see these circumstances that we don't understand, mm -hmm. like God, why is this happening? Or, right. or I don't, I don't see you in it. You have to back up and say, mm -hmm. God, help me to see you in this moment. Mm -hmm. seems like everything's out of control. Yeah. Um, it's, it, you know, it, it's not, ha it's not, it's not happening the way I expected it to happen. Mm -hmm. But if you back up, like Emily said, the greatest thing you can do is point inwardly, inwardly in your heart and say, God, what are you doing in me? Yeah. If we don't do that mm -hmm. first, what happens is we begin to point at other people mm -hmm. and we begin to judge other people. We begin to, we begin to say, well, if they were this way or if this thing was that way, then it would help me. But really that, that's not the truth. The truth is what is happening in me and right. why am I... Uh, you know, am I, am I frustrated because of this circumstance mm -hmm. or, um, or can I just embrace it right. and see what God wants to do? Right. Because you have here in your notes about the birth of Jesus. I mean, Jesus coming to the earth was completely different than what everybody was expecting. They expected the Messiah to come and become an earthly king and save them from all their earthly troubles and all of their earthly enemies. And instead he came uh, as a humble servant and he came um, as a baby in a cave in a manger and he came humble and he came to do an inner work and to change people from the inside out and to bring about a work that would um, change the generations to come by doing a work of repentance and change on the inside of a person um, and nations really but uh, so it was completely unexpected. He did not come and obliterate all of their earthly problems and enemies. And that is what Jesus does not do that now either. Sometimes he uses those circumstances, those very circumstances we didn't expect and didn't want to happen. He uses those things to make to do do an inner work instead. It, and that is what brings about your destiny. It, it's so is the true. work he's doing on the inside. It's so true. You know, David said this, I think about this often. Well, I don't like to think about it, but I do when it comes. It says, he said, it is good that I was afflicted. I thought, mm. oh man, it is good. It was good that I was afflicted mm. um, because it, it taught me, I think it said, because it taught me how to draw close to God. It taught me to learn from God. Yeah. So I think as leaders, you know, and as people uh, following God and just in any, any walk of life, even if you don't, don't even know Jesus, it's good when you go through circumstances that seem a little tough. Mm. Your relationships might get strained. Because what it does is it can bring an inner correction, yeah. an inner healing, right. um, something that, that, that David said, hey, it was good mm -hmm. that I was afflicted. Yeah. Um, you just know that, man, I'm, I'm glad I went through that. It hurts. I'm glad I went through that circumstance. Mm -hmm. It didn't feel good, mm -hmm. but the result was huge. Yeah. Like it, it brought something. It made me more aware of God, basically. I'm more mm -hmm. aware of God. I have more depth or more substance because of it. Yeah, so I'm thinking back to years ago when, you know, God was giving me promises about my purpose and my destiny on this earth and the different, you know, exciting things that he had planned for me and everything. And um, and then I went through a long, long season of not seeing those things happen and uh, getting frustrated and maybe impatient and all of that, but uh, of circumstances coming my way that looked completely the opposite of what God had promised me about my destiny. And in fact, though, those circumstances that came my way in that long season of waiting and getting close to God without seeing those promises being fulfilled was exactly the thing that was preparing me to fulfill my destiny. So you right. cannot get to your destiny without... Uh, the the work that comes by facing the circumstances that look completely opposite than what God has promised you. If you are in a season where you're like, I just want to fulfill what God told me that I would fulfill, and it looks like 
it's impossible. It looks more and more impossible because all these circumstances are coming against me. Well, it's probably exactly what God is doing on the inside of you is necessary in order to fulfill your destiny. You need that circumstance right now and you need the work that God is doing on the inside of you in order to fulfill it in the future. It, so, it is, you know, we talk yeah. a lot about in Shiloh, if you're still on here, she, she and I have been talking about this quite a bit, uh, of the stretching that happens on the inside, that God is stretching us and it's painful stretching, but what does stretching do? It makes room for more so that you can contain more of what God wants to pour into you and what he wants you to pour out to other people. So if you're feeling stretched by your circumstances or you're feeling just a lot of pressure or whatever, um, all of that is God allowing those things to um, expand your territory, expand you from the inside out and make room for for more so that you can fulfill your destiny. You can reach more people and you can be a blessing to more people. Um, so true. So yeah, a so waiting true. season, Kelly. Yeah, it, it is. Um, you know, in, in all of it, I love what, um, what David said here. He said, um, here it says in verse... Um, yeah, it definitely does add wisdom. I mean, there's no other way that you can get stronger faith deeper wisdom, uh, just a, a depth of understanding and um, an intimacy with the Lord. Uh, you know, it says the word says that he is close to the brokenhearted. Like there's an intimacy that happens when you have a broken heart. And of course, God doesn't want you to have a broken heart. He doesn't desire that for you. But no. through the brokenhearted season or through the brokenness that you're feeling on the inside, you know him in a much closer way than you can when you're on the mountaintop or when you're just everything's going great and you're you're feeling like you know everything's exciting in life right because you know? he, here's here's that scripture in psalm 119 70 it says my suffering was good for me for it taught me to Ooh. pay attention Ooh. to your to your degrees but it taught yeah. me to pay attention so again this whole like what we're That's talking so about good. is to be aware of god that um, makes it worth it. Yeah, it is. You, and and we, I know what happens when we go through tough circumstances and we're, we're, we're around people that it seems like, what is going on here? What's going on in the relationship? Mm -hmm. Well, God could be, he could be right there in it. And if we stiff arm that and push those people away or we don't receive or, or honor them or, mm -hmm. or, or think that God could speak to them through them, then what, hit, what happens is we stifle the Holy Spirit. We, mm -hmm. we, we, we delay our destiny. Mm -hmm. that, that's what happens. But when you, when you just simply mm -hmm. say, you know what, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm just going to open up my heart right now. Mm -hmm. I'm going to humble myself and I'm going to see what God wants to say. Cause it says my, my, my suffering was good for me. David said, for it taught me to pay attention, to be aware of God. And I think that, um, I think that when you can just embrace all people, I just said this. I said if you, one of the one of the things that you that we should do in life is we should love all people. We should forgive all people, and we should mm -hmm. not judge any people. And I just put a little hashtag or not hashtag, a little dash God. I believe that's God's heart. We should love all people. We should not, or we should forgive all people, and we should not judge any people. And I think that that right there is is doing good. Th those three things. Um, again, love. The definition is patience, long suffering. Well, I'm just going to be long suffering. I'm going to suffer long, um, even when things aren't going my way. I'm going to uh, love is patient. Um, love is kind. So those are those are things that you can just do good to see you fulfill your destiny. Okay, maybe you know where this is found. I think it's in one of the Timothy books. But anyways, what you were saying about the um about letting like just humbly receiving something through another person like whatever gift that they have or if they're completely different from you it just reminded me of the scripture that said um humbly receive the word of truth because it has the power to save, save your, your soul souls. like right. humbly receive the word of truth that god is speaking whether it's through um a person that you didn't expect or a circumstance that you didn't expect or just it's coming through a different um, way, a different vessel right. or a different way than you wanted it or <laughs> expected it to happen. I mean, just remember that Jesus came in a way that was unexpected mm -hmm. to the earth and he died and he arose in a way that was 
unexpected to everybody on the earth, but the result of it was um, uh, he is now the king of kings and the lord of lords, and his kingdom yeah. is ever increasing. Um, so humbly receive the word of truth wherever it's coming through, especially it, if it's in an unexpected way. It is. You know, I think that's, that's like one of the biggest things when you can just open up your heart mm. and you can... Um, you know, you can, you can just say, God, uh, I, I want to learn. Like mm -hmm. I want to learn. David said it was good that I, it was good that I was afflicted. It was good that I suffered because it made me aware of you, God. And so, um, I think any, any leader, anybody moving forward in, in Christ or anybody fulfilling your destiny has to be open. And we, we also have to recognize when we're kind of shutting people out or mm -hmm. shutting um, you know, there, there, there are things that we just, there are patterns that we, we can fall into right. where we don't even realize it all. Oh, we just, and then we kind of justify like, oh, it must be the spirit telling me not to do that. Mm. It may not be the spirit. It may be, maybe God saying, no, 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 you don't. You it might just be a habit. Then. It could be a habit, <laughs> not, not another spirit it's true. or it could be another spirit, could be, uh. but it's not God's spirit when he's saying, no, embrace this. This is good for you. Um, it, it looks different. You know, one of the people that we highlighted in this message was um, Danielle Franzoni. Yeah. And she, uh, mm. she, 34 years old, passed away um, unexpectedly, very quickly. Um, we, I was honored to be able to do the, the memorial here in Cadillac. She, was, she lived here for a time, and then mm -hmm. she, she moved down to uh, the Carolinas. But, you know, Danielle, for all, the, all of us who knew her, she was um, limited in her um, physical abilities. When she was three months old, she contracted a virus which caused her to be paralyzed on her right side mm. I, her mom is awesome her, I yeah. met her mom for the first time and she mm. said she said the state wanted to take Danielle and 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 be, and, and just say hey you know what? we're gonna take her because she's not mm -hmm. gonna be able to live uh, an, an effective life and her mom said no you won't yeah I'm taking her right. and and her mom raised her and and caused and because of that her love and her mm. commitment towards her caused Danielle to grow up, yes, with a limp. And, and but you, confident, and she was unaffected. I'm telling you, that girl did so much in 34 years, and most people do in a lifetime. Yes. She, you know, like I said, you know, I would see her, you know, periodically at church. She worked in the cafe, and I was always in the sanctuary mm -hmm. and praying and stuff, uh, preaching, but we would pass each other um, periodically, and and I would say, uh, you know, Danielle, you're amazing. She walked by and she would just say, I know. I know. She would say, I know. <laughs> just so confident. So but she made a difference. Like she served people. She always had a smile on her face. Yeah. She did not let her limitations get her down. She was always mm -hmm. forgiving. She was not a bitter person. Yeah. Um, she was fulfilling her destiny. She kept doing good. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, in the Carolinas, I said um, where she was at, she, the first thing she did was find a McDonald's and serve people. She didn't mm -hmm. work there. She was just like happy and serving and and probably picking up stuff for people. And when she passed away... Life, life's goal. That's her goal. When she passed away, they they um, flew the flag at half staff at that McDonald's just for oh, her. Wow, because she made mm. such a big difference. And wow. like, like, she did not let bitterness mm. or... In other words, she just did good. Yeah. Danielle, just everywhere she did, she put a smile on her face. Mm -hmm. She did good. She helped people. She served people. Yeah. And I believe... That I just believe it's my heart. I said, you know, God just said, Danielle, you've done so good. Mm -hmm. And God says, time for you to come home, my daughter. Mm -hmm. You're mine. Mm -hmm. And at 34 years old, she just did so much. Yeah. She affected so many people. Right. With yeah. Her, with her good work. And if you think about it, you guys, we all know our own limitations. We all have just such a, um, a, a limit. Uh, we have flaws. We have, um, you know, limits to what we feel like we can do and how... Um, effective we can be or whatever right. and we're always so critical of ourselves and down on ourselves but um, if we would use Danielle as that example she definitely had some obvious limitations but mm -hmm. did not let them no. affect her affect her purpose and so um, the rest of us should very um, just take a lesson from that I guess and and, and go like if she could do it I could do it oh, like I, sure. you can press through and just kind of ignore your limitations really and just do what God tells you to do in spite of it. That's really what she, she did. She lived her life right. as a bright, bright light. She was friendly to everybody in spite of all the limitations that yeah. she did have. I would say that she loved everyone, she forgave everyone, and she didn't judge anybody. Yeah. That's what that's what that's what she lived. And by the yeah. way, that's the Sacred. message right from heaven from God for all mm -hmm. of us is love everyone, yes. forgive everyone and don't judge anyone. Mm -hmm. I think when you live by that, 
you're gonna you're gonna you you will fulfill so much in this life just yeah. by doing those things, and um, and you'll see it you'll see it happen over and over again. Um, yeah. And at the end of your life, people say, "Man, so and so made such a big difference in my life," and uh, so grateful that they just followed God and um, yeah, you know, uh, fulfill their destiny. Right. So we're going to wrap it up now and uh, we're going to pray for you guys, but uh, just to let you know, like um, in a nutshell, your destiny is going to come in a different way than you expected. Mm -hmm. It is never going to be what you thought it was going to look like. It is never going to be exactly what you pictured in your head, you know, um, but it's going to be richer and it's going to be better and there's going to be so much more... Um, depth and substance to yeah. your destiny and I pr can probably guarantee that you're already fulfilling your destiny For sure. it's just that it's happening in a different way than you thought and probably with different people than you thought um, the people that are around you are the ones that are you're fulfilling your purpose mm -hmm. with those people that are right in yeah. front of you every single day um, but God is first doing a work on the inside so what happens on the inside of you is going to become obvious on the outside. Yeah. Um, he's fulfilling your, your purpose inwardly first. <laughs> yeah, and you do that again by just simply doing good. So yes. go right to your home. Doing if good. you're married, right in your marriage, do good. Yeah. Bury the hatchet. Say you're sorry. Mm -hmm. Just move forward in your destiny right there. Tell your kids you mm -hmm. love them. Forgive. You know, just keep moving outside that right. that that those areas, and you're gonna you're not gonna miss it. You will not miss your destiny. You'll do incredible things for God. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, do you want to go pray? ahead? You want me to pray? Sure. Okay. So I'm gonna pray for you guys, um, and then feel free to like and share this video with your um, pages and with your groups and stuff. So uh, lots of people can benefit from it. And we'll also share it on our YouTube channel, okay? Mm -hmm. So, uh, Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we lift up everybody who's watching now and um, later when we post this video, Lord. We, we just believe that you are putting this into the hands of the people who need to hear it. And we'll be encouraged by it, Lord. Mm -hmm. And um, we pray for each one, Lord, to be stretched on the inside, Lord, so they can contain more. Lord, your, you have a purpose for every single person who's watching, Lord, and we want to fulfill our purpose, Lord. We want to recognize what you're doing on the inside of us, Lord, that is causing us to take a next step into uh, the path that you have for us, Lord. Mm -hmm. And we want to remove those obstacles. If, if we have made mistakes, if we have kept bitterness in our hearts, or we have uh, cut off relationship with um, friends or family members or something, Lord, um, let there be restoration mm -hmm. and let, let us take the next step in doing the good work that you want us to do, mm -hmm. Lord, that will prepare us for the next step of our destiny. So I just thank you, Lord, for what you're doing inside us, Lord, and that is going to become obvious on the outside, Lord. And um, during the, the seasons that we're waiting or that we're being stretched or that we're under a lot of pressure, Lord, help us to recognize what you're doing and how you are actually preparing us and fulfilling our destiny mm -hmm. in those different um, unexpected ways, Lord. So we give you all the glory, Lord. I pray that this next coming year, Lord, um, that everyone uh, who is watching, Lord, will, will be blessed, that they will see your hand in their lives, Lord, and in their families. And um, Lord, give us vision to see uh, what you have planned for us for this next coming year. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Love you guys. See ya. So yeah. Uh, Talk to you Monday. Just, yeah. Oh yeah, we'll see you again on Monday. Mm -hmm. Ooh. And um, like we said, if you just joined us at the end, we are going on a vision retreat this weekend. So hopefully Monday okay. we'll be able to share with you some of what God is showing us for this next following mm -hmm. year. Okay, love you guys.